Hey there guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock, it's a Thursday, it's time for a Magic Stuff. Now last week on Magic Stuff, I did a video all about creating the perfect opener. I talked about all the different things that you need to consider if you are putting an opener together for your performance, whether it be a close-up show or whether it be a stage show, how to find that perfect opener. Now I did say I was gonna do another video off the back of that, and I am, this is one of those videos. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you, in my opinion, the six best openers for a stand-up show. Now, what do I mean by a stand-up show? I mean a show that's done to a group of people, okay? So to uh, it could be a parlor show, it could be a cabaret show, it could be an illusion show, it could be a stage show, um, but a, 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 to a group of people. This is not the best openers for walk-around, or mix and mingle, or close-up situations. I am gonna be doing a video on the best openers for walk around and close-up at some point in the future. This is a video um, if you are performing um, sort of a stand-up show, okay? Now, all six of these um, openers I have performed in my act for many, many years, and they're all fantastic. I think a lot of them you guys won't have seen before because they're kind of unknown, but they are all absolutely brilliant, and they are used in different ways in different situations. So without further ado, let's have a look at the first trick. Okay, so the first trick that I want to talk to you about is the vanishing bottle. Okay, so the vanishing bottle is an absolutely amazing prop. Uh, the best vanishing bottle, in my opinion, is the Nielsen vanishing bottles. The, I use the beer ones, um, but you know, there, there's so many different versions that you can use. Now, if you don't know what a vanishing bottle is, it is an absolute classic of magic. The whole idea is that you have a bag, you take a bottle, you put it into the bag, and then you scrunch up the bag and the bottles disappear. In essence, that's what the trick is. And that's one of the reasons why it's such a good opener. Because if you actually think about vanishing bottle, right? So if you actually think about uh, the effect it's over in a couple of seconds you just take a bottle you put it in the bag boom it vanishes it's as simple as that now when I use a vanishing bottle in my opener I do it in a very comedic way and normally I'll have a table on stage I'll have the bottle sitting on the table as if it's been there and I've been drinking it so it looks more organic I've even seen people in the past and they've had the bottle planted on tables in the audience. If you wanna do that, you can, but it makes a fantastic opener. Uh, the other thing that the Vanishing Bottle does for me is it establishes credibility and it lets people know what the show is gonna be about and it lets people know what my character is gonna be. And what I mean by that is I do it in a very comedic way, I do it in a very funny way, it grabs the audience's attention and by the end of the trick, they kind of get an idea of what the rest of the show is gonna be all about. Um, and and it's, it's, it's fun as well. Well, now I've got some live performance footage of me doing this uh, in the final of Britain Does Variety. Um, so this was on stage to about four or 500 people, maybe a few more. Um, and that's the nice thing, this trick can be seen from a real distance, it really can. So I wanna play this footage for you first of all, just so you can see a full live performance, and then we'll just quickly wrap up why it's such a great opening. It's comedy magician, please put the answer of the great Petty. Fantastic. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're having a good time. You sound so excited. My name's Craig. I'm a magician. Please contain your enthusiasm just for a second. I appreciate that. Uh, guys, I'm going to perform for you the very first trick I ever learned when I was six years old. Would you like to see that? Fantastic. He uses a brown paper bag. Looking inside the bag, it is completely empty. My hand goes inside. Now let me see, uh, you right there, sir. When I snap my fingers, I like to name any number between one and five. Completely free choice. Say nice and loud to everyone near you. If you could do that right now for me. 78. 78. <laughs> Have you ever helped a magician before? <laughs> and frankly, you're not helping one now, to be honest. <laughs> we'll try that again. Between one and five, when I snap my fingers, go for it right now. Four. Four. Thank you. <laughs> Years of practice. I said it's the first trick, I didn't say it's any good. Guys, the second trick's a bit better. I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. I have a bottle. I'm gonna put the bottle inside the bag, and then inside the bag, the bottle is gonna disappear. Give me an ooh. <laughs> Congratulations on probably the single most sarcastic group who have ever heard of my life. The bottle's gonna disappear on the count of three. I want to watch very carefully. Do not blink, it happens on three. That's one, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, the bottle's gone. Thank you. I'm good, right? This is the first part of this amazing trick. If I snap my fingers, the bottle comes back. I'm sensing hostility from some of you. you know? <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't get much better. But I'll try again. I'll tell you what, what we'll do this time, I'll let go of the bag. If I let go of the bag, and the bottle disappears. Would that be good enough to get a big round of applause? 
Right, that's the deal then. Everybody watch the bottle, watch the bag. On the count of three, it'll go, I'll let go. That's one, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, the bottle has gone. I have let go. Thank you. <laughs> I know. Years of practice. You do realise I'm going to keep doing this until you like it, right? <laughs> Could be here a while. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a magic act, so let's try and do some magic. Watch the bottle, watch the bag. One, two, three. That's the vanishing bottle. Ladies and gentlemen, completely gone. That's magic! Boom! Thank you. We're going to carry on while we've got you guys whipped up into a fever pitch. Let's continue with this carnival like atmosphere. I need two people. So, now you've watched the video, you can understand. When you, perform, when you perform on stage and you're walking out to a cold audience that have never seen you before, one thing that you need to do is really grab their attention straight away. And I've talked about this on last week's video. Um, and and I, I, I want to try and make it interactive because my show is very interactive. I want it to be interactive from the start. And, and because there's a lot of comedy in my show, I want to start off with a gag, which is why I go into the hole. I'm going to show you the first trick that I ever learned in magic. You saw it there, sir. How are you doing? You okay? Very good. I'm going to put my hand in the bag. I'd like to give me a number between one and five. Any number you want, two, three. Oh, thank you very much. And it gets a laugh. It immediately... It's a funny bit, it really is. But then you start going into the magic and, and, and they can blatantly see, it's very Tommy Cooper-esque, they can blatantly see exactly what's going on. And then you hit them with a really strong piece of magic. Just when they think that you can't do magic and this whole thing is gonna be a gag fest, you hit them with a really strong piece of magic and then you're into the show properly. And when you think about the vanish, it is a really strong vanish. It is very clean, it is very visual, and you can see it from a distance. Everybody knows it's based on assumptions. Everybody knows that a bottle cannot be squished down into nothing. So when you take that bag and you do that and you throw it away, amazing moment. I've been using this as an opener in my show for a long time. I'll tell you, I've even used this as, an, as a pre-opener to my illusion show. A lot of the time in my illusion show, I open with the crystal casket, which is a production of a girl in sort of a see-through box. But before, uh, before I do that, sometimes I'll come out on stage and I'll do a bit of a warm-up first of all, and this will be the warm-up. Um, and then that allows me to then go into the crystal casket because I'll say, well, you know what the problem is? I'm using this bottle. You guys at the back might not be able to see it. Let's see if we can go a little bit bigger. Boom. And then I'm into the crystal casket. So it's a great opener. It's a fantastic opener. It works really, really well. So the first trick um, that I would recommend if you're opening a show is the vanishing bottle. Okay, so the second trick that I'd recommend uh, is um, silk to egg. So the second trick, the second opener that I would recommend that you, you use as an opener in your show is silk to egg. And, uh, and the reason is, one, it's such a great trick. I mean, it really is a really strong trick. The audience, as long as they buy into thinking that you're teaching them a magic trick, that end moment where you then break the egg open and you show that the egg is uh, an actual egg just really hits them and it hits them hard. And this trick is absolutely brilliant for virtual shows as well. Um, for a virtual audience, this trick is brilliant because it works just as well virtually as it does to a big group of people. So, um, uh, first of all, I'm going to show you some performance footage of me doing this. But what I'm actually doing, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to show you a performance of me doing it at a virtual gig. So this was a retirement party for a, uh, uh, for a company, I think uh, down in London, and one of their team were retiring. So they, they asked me to come in and do uh, sort of a one hour show for them. So this is what this is, that's the context, and this is the opening of the show. So this is the first thing that I did. Um, so I want to have a look at that and you can see uh, how this plays in a virtual performance. Now this is a classic of magic, I'm gonna perform it for you. Then I will explain how it works, so please, Watch very, very carefully. The idea is very simple. I use a, uh, a glass and a green handkerchief. Hopefully you can see the green handkerchief, guys. If you can see it, that is good. Now watch. The idea is very simple. I have to take the green handkerchief and put it into my hand. Now, please do not look away for a second. Do not blink for a minute. The idea is very simple. I put the handkerchief into my hand. Now I have to put it all the way in my hand so there are no bits sticking out. If there's anything sticking out, that means it will not work, so it goes all the way into my hand. Now, once it is all the way into my hand like this, the magic happens like this. I just snap my fingers, wave my hand over in a suggestive yet PG fashion. And yet what happens, ladies and gentlemen, is that silk handkerchief, that green silk handkerchief turns into an egg. I know, isn't that crazy? And if the egg is over here, in here, we have the handkerchief. Now I'm gonna explain how this works. It is very, very simple. Uh, the idea to do this trick, you need a few things. You need a green handkerchief, perfect. You need a glass to put it in. You also need a magician's egg. Now this 
is a magician's egg. I know you're wondering, what is a magician's egg? Well, a magician's egg is an egg with a hole in it right there, you see. Uh, there's a technical term for that. It's called cheating, okay? Because you have an egg with a hole in it, and inside, you actually have a second handkerchief. Now, some of you might be catching on right about now, but for the ones of you that are a little bit slower, let me explain. First of all, you have to do something called the prep. The prep is what you do before you actually do the trick. It's very important to prep the trick. First thing that you have to do is you take your magician's egg, that's the egg with the hole in it, that one right there, and you put the magician's egg into your pocket. Once you've done that, you take a handkerchief, and you put a handkerchief in one pocket, and you take a handkerchief, you put a handkerchief in another pocket, and you are ready to begin. Now, this is what you do. It's very important to listen very carefully. The first thing that you do is you come out and you show your hands empty. Very important that people see that the hands are empty. And then you're going to go into your pockets as if you're searching for something. Now, what you're going to do with your left hand is you're going to grab the magician's egg. And with your right hand, you're going to grab the handkerchief. Now, remember, we talked about misdirection earlier on. I'm going to bring the green handkerchief out, first of all and wave it up and down. Everyone looks here, and then this hand comes out with my magician's egg palm, like this, you see. And then all I do is I hold the handkerchief in the same hand. Magicians call this misdirection, like I said. Now, this is the important part. You wanna make sure that the hole is pointing up, and then you're gonna take the handkerchief, wave it up and down. That gets everyone's attention. And then you push the handkerchief into the hand, but really, you're not pushing it into the hand. Really, you're pushing it into the hole in the egg. Magicians call this, pushing the handkerchief into the hole in the egg. Now, very important you don't turn your hand around while you are pushing it into the hole in the egg. That's stupid. You don't want to do that because that'll give the game away. You push it all the way in. Now take your time over this because you don't want to leave any bits sticking out. You want to make sure that every little bit of that green handkerchief is tucked inside that egg. Now this is the bit that's important. You're going to wave your hand over, do something, and then you're going to hold the egg, covering the hole with your thumb. You bring the egg up, show it, and you will get a big round of applause for being so clever. A bit like this, ta-da! I know, right? And then you reach into your pocket and you pull the other handkerchief out and you say the other handkerchief is there. Now that, you can do this yourself. You just need to get a magician's egg. There is one thing that's very, very important. Two things, actually. The first thing is don't perform with someone behind you. They will see the hole in the egg. That is a bad idea. Number two, more importantly, if you get a heckler, a smart ass, you know, somebody that goes, I know how that works. There's a hole in the egg. This is what you do. You take the egg, you snap, you blow. That's all you have to do. You then take the egg, tap it against the glass. And when you do, you then open it up and show it is a real egg. There is no hole in the egg. And that is the miracle of the egg trick. So you can see, if you've never seen silk to egg before, it's amazing. By the way, the best silk to eggs are prop dog, in my opinion. If you're gonna get a silk to egg gimmick, um, prop dog do the absolute best ones. That's where I get my silk to egg gimmicks from. Uh, you'll notice that I don't do the sticker thing. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Uh, I, 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 it's very controversial, and I know a lot of people disagree with me, and I haven't really got a strong argument as to why I don't use the stickers, but I prefer not to use the stickers. I prefer to, you know, just have that moment where I, 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 uh, I, I break it and I show that it's a real egg. The stickers are fine, uh, you know, but and what I mean by that is, is, you know, a lot of people will have that sticker, they still think they can see the silk in there and you peel the sticker off and you show it's a real egg and then boom, that's fine. Uh, I don't do that, but you know, there's no reason why you can't. But in terms of an opener, it's great. Now, it, the nice thing about a virtual show is you can come right close to the camera when you break the egg so they can see that it really is a real egg. So you can start back and then you can come forward. If you've got an overhead camera, Camera, you could do you could switch to an overhead camera if you wanted to um, but it's, it's a very intriguing I, I talk a lot on this channel about hook lines and I talk about the importance of having a hook line to grab the audience's attention and, and it's a very interesting hook as an opening routine in a show ladies and gentlemen I'm going to open up the show but I'm going to do something a little bit different I'm going to break every single rule of magic and I'm going to teach you a magic trick I'm going to perform a classic of magic and then teach you how it works um, so here we go let me go and, and now people are invested in it a lot of people are like oh my gosh this is great let me I'm going to learn a trick here this is cool I'm going to learn the secrets and then you you go through this whole thing and the pseudo explanation seems real right it makes sense doesn't it that, that that's how the trick would work and then just when they think the whole thing's over 
boom, you hit them with the magical moment. And in that regard, it's a little bit like the vanishing bottle. If you actually think about the vanishing bottle, they think the whole thing's a gag, and at the very end, you hit them with, a, with an amazing vanish. With this, they think the whole thing's just an exposure, and then you hit them with the fact that you've been leading them up the garden path the whole time, which is another great thing about it because it really establishes my character as well. Um, so yeah, I'd really recommend the Silk to Egg. It's a fantastic trick, well worth learning, well worth putting in. As an opener to your show, it works really well. Now let's look at the next trick. Okay, so the next trick that I'm going to recommend as an opener is one that I've started doing very recently. I've started doing this very recently, which is pre-mental diction um, by Chris Dugdale. Now, it's a new item that's available. Um, I think we're reviewing it on the review show soon, if we haven't already. But pre-mental diction is great. Now, what it is, is it's basically um, you come out with a wallet and um, the wallet's right there. And uh, there's a target on the wallet and you talk about how, you know, when you play darts, a maximum amount you can get is 180. Uh, let's say you're having an imaginary game of darts and you throw three darts. What's the total that you've got? Uh, 78 or whatever it may be. Brilliant. Well, inside this wallet is another wallet and inside this wallet is a card. And on this card, I put something. I put the number 78. Thank you very, very much. That's it. But I mean, it's over in 30 to 60 seconds, right? It is really quick. But talk about establishing credibility. I talked about this last week on the video last week. One of the most important things that an opening routine should do is establish credibility. You don't want to be having people think, OK, well, this guy's not very good or this guy's boring. And this is something that hits them and hits them hard. Now, although it's a mentalism style thing, you don't just have to do this as mentalism. You can do it as a mental magic thing. Uh, I'm not a mentalist by any stretch of the imagination. But for the last few weeks, I've been doing this in my virtual show as an opener and it's been going really well and how I've been using it as is kind of like an audience test so I kind of do my opening so it's like good evening ladies and gentlemen welcome to the show uh, this is going to be a live performance this is not a pre-recorded video uh, I will be interacting with every single one of you in the audience so uh, I hope you're excited about that now unfortunately I can't just do this show to anybody I need to make sure that you the audience and myself are in sync so I need a representative from the audience and I need somebody who's going to represent the audience as a whole uh, you right there so you're going to represent the audience as a whole. Uh, let me just grab you. Uh, let me just bring you up on the screen and take you off mute. What's your name? Nice to meet you. Uh, I have this wallet here. So now this is what we're going to do. And then I get into it. And it's just a killer moment. It really is. Um, let's have a look at the performance of it. I haven't got any performances live. I've only just started doing it. And I haven't got anything recorded off a virtual show yet. So I'm going to perform it to, uh, to Sarah behind the camera. Uh, I'm going to give it a full performance. And then we can uh, just wrap. Uh, what we think of. Fair enough. Right, Thea, this is called pre-mental diction. Now, do you know what darts is, Thea? It's that game that Ryland plays where he throws things. Yeah? Yeah, he practices getting to the middle. He practices getting to the middle. It's not very good at it, though, is he? But I mean, he Shut practices. Shut up, I always do it. <laughs> now, Every Thea, time? when you play darts, if you throw three darts at a dartboard, the maximum number that you can get is 180. Okay? Now, I've got a little mini dartboard here. And I want you to pretend, use your imagination, that you've thrown three darts at this dartboard okay. and you've ended up getting a number. What number do you think you've ended up getting? 67. Now, Thea, I don't want you saying later on, I made you pick 67. Yeah. I don't want you going to sleep tonight and not being able to sleep because you're thinking, well, what would have happened if I'd have said a different number? And you can't get to sleep because it's freaking you out. So if you want to change your mind and go with a different number, you can. But if you want to stick with 67, that's cool. What I want to stick with 67. Are you sure? Yeah. Final answer? Yeah. That's the audience? You don't have to actually ask the audience. Right, okay. <laughs> let's, let's check. Because, Thea, I, I, inside this wallet... There is another wallet theory. It's a wallet in a wallet. A wallet in a wallet. It's a wallet in a wallet. How weird is that? But inside this wallet theory, oh, inside this wallet, I have my business card. Thea, if you ever need a magician, who are you going to call? Daddy. Good job. But <laughs> I wrote something on the other side of this business card, and this is going to freak you out, Thea. Do you know what I wrote? No. I wrote the number 60... Seven, that face right there, that's the face of a freaked out five-year-old girl. 67. And now you can keep this as a souvenir 
And there you go. If you need a magician, there's daddy. Give me a call. Right. So there you go. I mean, it's it's really quick. It's really simple. There's nothing else to say. It, it, the key thing about this is it does establish credibility. And also it is interactive, you know, using the whole uh, invisible uh, darts kind of thing and getting them to imagine what, uh, what number they're thinking of. It is really, really strong. And um, it's very, very easy as well, which is cool, uh, which means that you can focus on the presentation. Um, yeah, it's just a great opener. Um, it's highly recommended it's also i know this technically isn't um looking at stuff for walk around or close up but this works really well in walk around and close up as well anyway let's have a look at the next trick okay so let's have a look at the next uh, the next trick the next opener that i'd recommend to you i'm going to call this the tape tr tape measure trick by joshua j uh, I don't know if it is called the tape measure trick. Uh, I learned this off Josh's DVD sets uh, years ago. Like I'm talking, oh my gosh, it must be about 10 or 12 years ago that I learned this routine. And I've been doing it pretty much on and off for the last 12 years. Uh, it's a great opener that I can do. I I've got a show that I keep in a bag. So I've got a bit like a Bill Abbott pack small plays big act. I've got a stage act that I can do that I've put into a bag about this big. And this routine is in there as an opening routine. I do do it other times as well, but as an opening routine, this is great. And if you don't know what it is, the whole idea is that you bring out a tape measure and you ask somebody in the audience to point to anyone else and you say I want this to be completely random so you right there can you point to anybody in the audience and, and when they do they stand up and you say now I've got a tape measure here I have made a prediction um, can you please come up on stage everyone give them a big round of applause and then you say I've made a prediction on this tape measure I've never met you before can I ask you how tall are you and they might say whatever they might say uh, six foot five foot eight whatever and you go interesting watch this can you hold on to this for me please and uh, and then you just unroll the tape measure and you stop when you get to five uh five foot eight let's say to say five foot eight you stop at that point and then you 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 extend it and you, they can see that you've put a black sharpie mark right next to five, five feet eight and you've actually predicted the height of the randomly picked spectator which is when you think about it it's not the most mind-blowing trick in the world but it is it gets such a great reaction because you could have picked anybody from the audience and different people at different heights and you predicted exactly here in permanent marker pen on that tape measure the height of the person that you were going to get to come up and help you it is really strong and also it's quick it's over in a few seconds that's not really that visual but you always get a great reaction from the person that stands next to you. And also it plays big. It fills the stage. And what I mean by that is when you're walking backwards and you're extending the tape measure, you're taking up the whole of the stage. You've got one spectator there. You've got yourself there. You've got this tape measure. It looks like it p fills a whole stage, even though all you've got is really a tape measure. And it's an almost an instant reset. It takes about 60 seconds to reset it ready for your next performance. And it's very, very easy to do. Uh, I've got no live performance of footage of me doing this, so I'm gonna do it to Sarah. Uh, behind the camera. She's never seen this before, so I'm gonna perform this for her right now. Uh, I know Sarah's height. So I'm gonna get her to say a random height because obviously I know what I know how I know how tall my wife is. So I'm gonna get Sarah to, uh, to 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 watch this trick and then we'll wrap this whole thing up. I have Sarah behind the camera. How are you doing, sir? Hello. I need you to help me. I have a tape measure. Now, obviously, everybody that's watching this knows that you are my wife, and therefore I know how tall you are. Um, normally, when I perform this trick, I have somebody come up on stage. Uh, I pick somebody completely at random with a ball, and they come up on stage, and and uh, and I, I, I've predicted their height. But we're going to do things slightly differently. I do actually present it this way sometimes as well, so we're going to do it this way. Sarah, um, I want you to imagine that you've walked into a room and there is a person there in front of you. Now, it could be a man, it could be a woman, it could be, uh, uh, it could be a young person or an old person. It's not really important about their name or what they look like or anything like that. All that's important 
is their height. Now, I want you, when I snap my fingers, to name the height that this person is. Now, bearing in mind, you can use your imagination. So you could say that this person is two foot tall if you want to, and they've just come off the cast of uh, the, the, the set of Willow. Or you could say that they're 10 feet tall and they're a WWE wrestler. It's completely up to you. Don't be limited by the fact that a lot of people are like five foot, six foot. I've got to be honest with you. Some people do go for that height, but a lot of other people, they kind of go in a really random direction. The only thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to make sure the height that you give me uh, is less than 16 feet. And the reason is this is a tape measure and it has 16 feet on here in length. And I have made a prediction on this tape measure. I'm going to hold the, uh, the, the tape measure here. There's no way that I can change my mind. The, the prediction is on there. I think I'm going to be correct. So Sarah, for the first time, go ahead and name that height. Uh, five foot eight. Okay, now do you want to change your mind? Because I don't want you saying later on, well, Craig was really good, but he made me pick five foot eight. So I don't want you saying that. Are you sure you want five foot eight? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Now, normally, if there were a couple of other people here, what I would do is so I'd give the tape measure uh, to somebody and I'd get them to walk backwards. And that's the nice thing about this routine. It literally fills the whole stage. But I'm just going to go through this here. Uh, so that's one foot. Um, that's two feet. Uh, if we keep going, there's three feet. Keep going, there's... Have I gone past four feet? No, three feet, uh, five feet. You must have gone past four feet. Yeah, there's four feet. Uh, five feet. Now you said five foot eight, yeah? Yeah. So that's five foot seven right there. Five foot seven. Let me show you right there on five foot eight. Let me just turn this round. I want you to see. Can you see that mark right there? Zoom in if you have to. Can you see that mark right there on five foot eight? It's not like I've marked the whole <laughs> thing. I haven't. There is one mark and one mark only right there on five foot eight. And that is the height that you said, which means that we're definitely in sync and we can now do this next experiment. And then you go into whatever else you, you're going to do. So, so don't you think that's super fun? Isn't that a fantastic trick? Um, it, like I say, it plays so big, but it looks so visual. It really does. It ticks all the boxes for me as an opening routine. Um, but what's nice about this is you can actually use it in other places. So if you don't want to do it as an opening routine to your show, you can do it when the spectator comes up on stage. Um, so if you're halfway through your show and you're bringing a spectator up on stage, you say, now we've never met before. I could have picked anybody. I picked you. Uh, and, and you can do this thing as kind of a pre-trick before you go into the main trick, which is absolutely brilliant. So yeah, it's highly recommended. Um, you can learn it from one of Josh's DVD tapes, but I can't, when I went to look at them, I couldn't find the routine on there and I didn't want to spend hours looking through each one. Um, so I'm going to call it the tape measure trick. But if anybody knows the specific trick that I'm talking about, let us know in the comments down below. That would be awesome. Okay, so now we've got routine number five, opening routine number five. And this is the only one that I'm not going to give you live performance footage for. And the reason is, I worry that if I put a live performance video of this, people would figure out how it works. And I don't think that's fair on the creator. So I'm not gonna actually show you any footage of this, but I am gonna explain it in detail. And I mentioned it on last week's video. If anybody looked at last week's video, um, I mentioned it on there. I'm talking about Ken Dine or Kennedy's heads and tails routine. When I am performing for a corporate audience and I'm doing like a half an hour set, this, this is normally, uh, this is very common. If I've, if I've been booked to do close up magic at sort of a corporate do, that a lot of the time they'll ask me to do a half an hour set afterwards, um, which, which, is, which is very common. If I'm in that sort of event, where the audience is conditioned that at some point they're going to they're going to uh, play heads or tails anyway this is always my opening routine because even though it isn't visual and it doesn't tick a lot of the boxes i talked about last week it doesn't feel like i'm doing a trick until i actually make the prediction before that it feels like i'm just kind of the mc and i'm I'm running uh, a heads and tails game. Now, if, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about and didn't see last week's video, heads and tails is a very common game that MCs will play at corporate events, at least in the UK, but I've seen it in, in America as well. And the whole idea is that uh, um, 
people that, that they give people on the tables a chance to win a prize. Everybody puts ten pounds in, and that typically goes to charity, and they're going to win a prize of some description. Everyone stands up, and the guy flicks a coin, and if it lands, head, everybody puts their hands on their heads or on their bum, and then the MC flicks a coin. If it lands heads, anybody with the hands on the head sits down, and and they continue to do it over and over again, eliminating people until they're left with one person, and that one person wins the prize. That is how heads and tails works. Well, when I'm doing a corporate event, I will you Ken, Ken Dine came up with an amazing presentation, uh, uh, and, and you can learn it on his Penguin Lecture. It's the first trick on his Penguin Lecture. It, it, his lecture, by the way, is one of the best lectures on Penguin. It's absolutely amazing. But what he does um, is he basically plays a game of heads and tails, but he's got this big envelope that's on stage the entire time. Um, He's got this big envelope that's on, that's on stage. He does the heads and tails, just like you'd expect to do. You know, coin flicked. Um, okay, sit down, sit down, sit down. And he ends up with one person, and that person wins the prize. But then he opens up the, uh, the envelope that's been there the whole time, and the envelope predicts exactly what that person looks like, what they're dressed in, their name. It predicts everything. And it's the perfect opening for a mentalism show. I... Like I said, I'm not a mentalist, but I use it as an opening for my corporate show as well. So um, how do I do it? So when I'm going to start my set, I'll tell the organiser beforehand, hey, I'm, I'm going to play a game of heads and tails beforehand, if that's OK. And they always say, yeah. And I say, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Craig. I'm the magician. You've seen me walking around doing magic. I'm now going to be performing a show for you. But before I do, I have been asked by the organisers of the event to play heads and tails. If you don't know what heads and tails is, the idea is very simple. Uh, I'm going to uh, spin a coin. Uh, in fact, I'll get one of you from up to help me spin the coin. So I'm going to get you guys to spin a coin and, uh, and we're going to eliminate people down to one person and that person is going to win the prize. So I need somebody who can come up and help me to spin the coin. Are uh, you right there, sir? Fantastic. Have you got a coin that I can use? That coin, that's brilliant. Let's get into this right now. So that's, that's what I do. And I, I, I will typically pick out the envelope. I say, now after this, I am going to perform my show. It's very important that you keep an eye on that envelope over there because that is going to be the opening routine to my show. Let's do this. And then I do heads and tails. And then when we're left with one person, the person that's spinning the coin, I get them to sit down. The person who won the prize, I get them to stand up. I give them the prize. And then um, uh, I say, of course, I did say that when heads and tails finished, I was going to open the show. And you right here, sir, you can help me with the show uh, because... I have an envelope over there. Can you grab the envelope for me, guys? The envelope has been here the whole time. Inside the envelope is a piece of paper. And I've written it on a massive piece of paper. And he holds one side, I hold the other side, and we unravel it. And it, it, it just basically says everything. The winner will wear a red tie. Sir, you have a red tie. He'll have a blue suit. You have a blue suit. He'll be wearing glasses. You're wearing glasses. He has no hair. You have no hair, sir. And his name will be blah, 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 blah. And it's, a, it's an incredible opening. Because the audience is conditioned into seeing this game. If you go to a corporate show, you've probably been to a whole bunch of them and you've seen Heads or Tails played a million times. So the ability to do that and then turn it into a magic trick is really strong. So, yeah, it's a great opener. It may not be visual, but uh, it is quick because the actual trick itself is the opening of the envelope. Everything beforehand is like the MC bit, if that makes sense. It's not, you don't have to think of that as part of the show because it's not... Uh, and it is incredible. If you perform in a corporate audience, I highly recommend it. And the nice thing is you don't need any special props. You can do this with an envelope, a piece of paper, a Sharpie marker. Nothing is gimmick. The envelope could be handed out to a member of the audience if you want to. There's nothing special with the envelope. There's nothing special with the coin. You're good to go anytime, anywhere. You have somebody come up and, and it is brilliant. Uh, it's one of my favorite tricks. You can get it from Kennedy, Ken Dines, Penguin Lecture. Uh, it's called Heads and Tails. And um, yeah, it's highly recommended. And the final routine that we are going to be talking about is one of the best tricks of 2020, in my opinion, which is outstanding. Now, if you don't know what outstanding is, outstanding is um, a Mark Oberon trick that was released earlier this year, uh, earlier in 2020. And, and the whole idea is that you have you show a uh, an envelope in your pocket. You have somebody name a card. You then take out the uh, the envelope. You open it up. You show that you've got a piece of paper in there. There's just one piece of paper. There's nothing else in the envelope. And you open up the piece of paper, and you have very clearly, in very heavy embossed ink, written on there the name of their card. That's it. It's over in seconds. It makes a great opener. It makes a great opener for a mentalism show because oh my gosh, that's brilliant. But it makes a great opener for any show.
Um, I use this as an opener quite a lot. In fact, sometimes I actually use this as almost like a second opener. So I'll do Vanishing Bottle, and then I'll say, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Let's start the show. I need someone to come up and help me. But I can't just pick anyone. I need to make sure that we're in sync. So I'll tell you what, uh, you right there, sir. What's your name? James. James, I'm going to try an experiment here to see if you're in sync uh, with me. I have an envelope here in my pocket. I have one envelope and one envelope only. You're going to name a card, sir. And we're going to see if, I can, uh, if I've been able to predict the card that you are going to name. If I have, that means we're in sync and you can come up and help me with the show. Sir, can you name a card for me right now? Uh, Seven of Diamonds, fantastic. You could have named any card, you named the Seven of Diamonds. Here's the envelope, inside the envelope there is one piece of paper, one piece of paper only, and on this piece of paper I have the Seven of Diamonds. I can see that you're all impressed, thank you very much, but that means you, sir, are gonna to come to the top of the stage to help me and everyone is gonna give you a big round of applause. Boom, and then I'm into the show. So it's, it's great, it's so quick. It's so easy, it's so visual. There's no lighting problems, there's no angle problems. Uh, outstanding is a great trick, and I do do it close up, but when you do it on stage, there's literally nothing to worry about. But because the paper is so bright and the ink is so heavy, uh, you can see it from right at the back of the room. It's, it's a little bit like doing an invisible deck as an opener. It's a little, a little bit like saying, hey, pick, name a card, boom, well, I've got one card turned over in this deck and it's your card, but it's even stronger because it's written on a piece of paper. Uh, at least in my opinion. Um, but there you go. Uh, it's, it's, it's really good. And it takes up no pocket space. It's just literally one inside jacket pocket. And you're ready to go. Um, if you want to get the audience's attention, and remember one thing that I've talked about over and over again in the video last week and the video this week, is I've talked about credibility. The importance of your opening routine lending credibility to your performance so that people are invested in watching you perform. And doing something like Outstanding... Um, it so really Sarah, uh, normally if I was standing up, I would open up my jacket pocket and show you I've got an envelope there. I'm sitting down. So I'm going to tell you I've put an envelope down here. There is an envelope inside there. There is a prediction. We'll get back to this envelope in a second. Sarah, I want you, when I snap my fingers, to name a card. There's 52 cards in the pack. Uh, they go clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds, because there's four suits. Now, inside each suit, there's 13 values. They go from ace through to king. That makes 52 cards altogether. Uh, we're not going to count jokers in this. When I snap my fingers, I would like you to name any card that you want to. It is completely free choice a lot of people tend when i ask them to do this they name the queen of hearts and the ace of spades psychologically they are really popular cards if you want to name a queen of hearts or an ace of spades you can but if you do that please don't say to me later on everybody picks that card i personally would prefer if you named a bit more of an obscure card but it's completely up to you do you have that card in mind can you name it right now yeah the six of hearts please uh, you want the six of hearts you seem yeah. a bit unsure there no, I was trying to decide between hearts and diamonds, but I'm going to go for hearts. You sure you want hearts? Because I've got this envelope and it's been here no, the no. whole time. Six okay. I want to show you something. This envelope has inside it uh, a piece of paper. If I can just take it out. There you go. Piece of paper. It's not like there's a million pieces of papers inside this envelope. There's not. There's one piece of paper and one piece of paper only. And on this piece of paper, there's written one card and one card only. Sarah, can you see that? Does that show up on the camera? It does. Right there. It? The <laughs> six of six, hearts. Yeah. Proof. But I knew exactly what you would do. So there you go. That's it, guys. That is six tricks, six opening tricks for your cabaret show, your parlor show, uh, your stage show that you might not have seen before that I think make great opening routines. Now, uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think. Have you performed any of the, these routines? And if you have, what's the reaction to them? What do you think of them? Do you put them in an opening position? If you don't, what do you put in that position instead? And also, what is your opener in your stage show? Do you do a stage or a cabaret or a polo show? What's your opener? Let me know in the comments down below. And would you like to see one of these videos done on opening routines for close-up as well? If you would, let me know in the comments down below. One more time, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like it, like the video, subscribe to the channel and i'll be back again tomorrow with a magic rant i'll see you then thanks very much for watching my name's craig from magic TV.